So every week we're getting some interesting new tidbits, little nuggets of information about the upcoming Super Broly movie from the official website. And this week we have an interesting interview with Naohiro Shintani, who is the animation director and lead animation supervisor for this film, which everybody's been going crazy for because he's bringing that new style into Dragon Ball. And we have some more interesting behind-the-scenes tidbits about the Broly movie that have been revealed in this interview. Of course, from the official Japanese Dragon Ball Super website. Herms translates this, of course, for us, as he always tends to do. And um, we talk about, essentially, let's, let me show you guys kind of what's here, first of all. So there's, there's questions for Shintani. There are the original designs right here. Uh, base Goku, Super Saiyan. We have God form. We have Blue form. You know, you've seen these before. And there is, of course, Goku holding the Nioi bow, otherwise known as the power pole. And they talk about how, you know, uh, one of the, no, excuse me, one of the nuggets in the interview is Shintani talking about how he chose to draw Goku with the bow, with the power pole, because it was a throwback. It was basically an old school throwback, because in the manga, there's actually a pose where Gohan holds it, which was done in the original Dragon Ball Z um, ending with the credits, where they show Gohan holding the, the, the pole. That's right from Toriyama. And he talks about how he drew this in February of 2017, which is very interesting. Herms translated that. And that's interesting because if you remember, February 2017, which is a year and a half ago, is when the Tournament of Power arc began. We've discussed in the past how this movie was planned out for a very, very long time. So he turned in this poster to Toei Animation uh, in October for all the, and I'm sorry, he drew this one in February, then he turned in all the original character designs, like the drafts, in October. Toriyama had drawn his designs first, then Shintani took them and sort of, I guess you can call them, it's not really redrawing, it's more so he made them, they made, he made them into anime slates so that the animators can work off of them because Toriyama's original designs are designed more so just to show what the characters look like. Shintani has to make it so that the animators know where their base is. And the beautiful thing about it is he talks about in the interview that when he turned this in, Toriyama didn't correct anything. He, he gave it the thumbs up um, for this Goku design, but he did... He was more picky when it came to the female characters like Bulma and characters like that. You know, so Toriyama, what he'll do sometimes is, you know, even if you're the animation supervisor, he will go in and kind of make corrections and say, okay, change this, make her hair look like this, you know, things like that. So they all kind of work together in a collaborative way. Uh, sense. So in the interview, Shintani goes on to talk about that because Toriyama's style changed throughout the years. You know, if you read the manga, if you even watched the anime, you know that he became more angular when we got to like the deeper parts of Dragon Ball Z, really the Frieza saga. And then from then on, you know, he had to figure out how to emulate Toriyama correctly and which style to emulate. And Shintani said that he likes Minoru Maeda's style and that's why he chose it. And I agree with that. I've said it I don't know how many times that I love the Minoru Maeda animation supervisor style for Dragon Ball. Now, for those of you who might not know what I'm talking about, Minoru Maeda was the first animation supervisor who worked on Dragon Ball and into Z. And my personal favorite, this is just my favorite look for Dragon Ball, is the classic, like, Piccolo arc into Saiyan Saga. Like, that early DBZ, late Dragon Ball look. Love Minoru Maeda style. I just love how it's got like the rounded faces. You know, I just love that style a bit more than I do the Boo Saga art. I like all the art, but me personally, I prefer that style as being sort of the peak of Dragon Ball. But to be honest with you guys, it could also be nostalgia because I watched a lot of that early DBZ stuff over and over and over again. You know, the Saiyan Saga and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, it was interesting because... As a result of this, he says in the interview that, oh, well, I studied Tayoshi Amamuro's designs, you know, who was the other animation supervisor who came in after Maeda, uh, but before Shintani. He worked with, you know, Super and all that stuff. But what's weird about this is, you know, Shintani, in the interview, he makes it seem like he's never worked on Dragon Ball before, but that's not true because he actually worked on the 2008 Yo Son Goku special, which I've already done a video on. I'll leave a link to that at the end of this. He did work on a, you know, 40 minute, I think it was 30 or 40 minute, I forgot how long it was. I think it was 30 minutes, OVA. So he's worked on Dragon Ball before. He's not anything new here. Now, what's interesting as far as tidbits go about Broly is that in the as he was designing these characters he says that 
when it comes to Broly, Shintani felt nostalgic, but he wanted to make sure, because he wanted to make sure that the Broly fans who liked Broly were happy with the way Broly looked, because Toriyama's Broly is different from the old one, um, which is weird for the old fans, but he says that he hopes that the old fans and the new fans will enjoy the film. So, that's interesting because I'm not sure if he's referring to just the way the character looks, or if he's referring to... Um, like what the character does because obviously Broly looks like the old Broly but just not identical you know different clothing and whatnot we know his backstory is probably going to change and his attitude is probably going to change but you know either way it just cements more of that more of the idea that we're going to get a new Broly so um Herm says that he or Herms translates that Shintani didn't have a lot of experience on muscular characters, so Broly was a challenge for him to kind of get the big biceps and triceps and everything going. Um, he tried to stay true to Toriyama's skinny designs, you know, giving Toriyama kind of that slim look from, like, Battle of Gods and whatnot, but Broly just can't be slim, man. This dude's a freaking tank. You know that. That's part of Broly's character is to be a tank. As Clyde the Weeaboo would say, uh, a Chad. Um, that's He's a big beast who fights you know that's what he is you can't make him slim uh shintani says that he typically doesn't use much for like slice of life scenes like he doesn't use a lot of shading for it um but instead for the battle scenes is when he throws in the heavy shading and whatnot um so it kind of makes the audience understand that okay it's go time it's battle time i love that he says that in the interview here as well so I really do respect that about him, that he wants to do a different style for the battles. So when this movie comes out, we'll be watching it and we'll know when something's going to go down, when it starts getting more shaded. That's what apparently he's saying in the interview. Of course, the movie's not done yet. Um, and they talk about, he talks about how the director, Nagamine, gives the animators free hand. So essentially, he this guy allows the animators a lot of creative freedom. He's not one of those micromanagers who sticks to, you know, it's got to be like this, it's got to be like this. He's going to let each individual animator and the supervisors kind of dictate the scene. And I really like that because even though some fans are probably wondering, well, is that going to lead to an inconsistent looking movie? I don't think so in this case because I trust Naohito Shintani. I trust him and... They talk about how, you know, the animators can really stretch out their legs and create something great. So I still do believe that the fight scenes in this movie are going to be epic. I mean, they're going to be some of the best stuff we've seen ever, maybe. Now, uh, interesting that he also talks about the projected goal for the film. Uh, he talks about how Nagamine's goal was to make 10 billion yen, which is about 90 million dollars U.S. And I don't know if he's talking about just Japan for it to make 10 billion, but I do think that when you factor in how much it's going to make in the United States and Latin America and Canada and the U.K., I think they're going to hit that goal. But that is a pretty big goal. Um, and then he talks more about, like, if you go down in the interview, this is all in Japanese, I'm translating from Herms, he talks about how, you know, he, he first found Dragon Ball, uh, when he was a kid in elementary school, and then he saw the movies with his big brother in theaters, and now the dude is working on a movie. So, like, I always tell you guys out there, if you're an artist, and you want to make it, look at these dudes, man, if you're out there and you're an artist or you're a musician, whatever, these dudes were just like us, bro, they were freaking just watching this thing on TV, and you got guys like Toyotaro, who now works on Dragon Ball Super, which <laughs> might not be a good thing to some, you got people like Naho Oishi, Shintani, these people grew up with Dragon Ball, Yuya Takahashi, and now they're working on it, they're actually working with Toriyama, that's crazy, like, that's just nuts, that you can actually make it, you know, don't give up your dream, man, because you never know, like, isn't it, I'm not guaranteeing you that you're gonna work with your, your, you know, with, with, uh, I don't know, Alex Ross, if you like comic books, but it, it, you never know, like, life is crazy, like, trust me on this one, life is nuts, I would have never thought that I would be interviewing Sean Schemmel, and I did, you know, and all these people, it just, life is unpredictable, so never forget that, um, so he talks about how, you know, a bunch of people auditioned for the job, and Toriyama personally selected him, which, again, it, it kind of makes it seem like, because he says it was the first time ever drawing Dragon Ball stuff, even though he worked for Toei, he worked on the One Piece movie, um, but that's not true, because he worked on the 2008 OVA, so that tells me that maybe Toriyama didn't actually directly choose him for the 08 OVA, but he did choose him for this movie. Toriyama himself, pretty much, it's implied that he wants a new style, like, not saying that, I mean, again, uh, he didn't say this, he didn't understand, this is the implications I'm getting, this is not what Toriyama said, that he did want the movie to look different, to look fresh, to look new, and that's why Shintani has the job, so, to me, that's all very good, and I think that 
what he says here about letting the animators have free reign and you know, uh, I think it's good. We have some interesting stuff I want to quickly talk about here when it comes to Broly. We have here his designs. Once again, we've seen these before. These are more high-quality pictures. Here is presumably him, you know, during the Frieza part. And when he's with Frieza, we don't really know the details of that yet. And then we have him uh, later on fighting. This is when he's actually fighting. Um, and then this is interesting because I've seen some people hit me up and they're saying, okay, does this mean Broly survives? Because they don't understand why Broly is, is, is in his base form, but yeah, he's battle damaged, right? I don't think this means that Broly survives. There is a chance that Broly could go back into his base form at some point in the film before powering up again. I don't think it necessarily means that um, he's going to survive the film. Some people are jumped to conclusions on that one. you got to be careful. You don't want to jump to conclusions when it comes to these things because you don't know. Um, could he survive? Yes. Uh, is it probable he'll survive? I don't know, but... If they already have plans to continue, and based on the fact that Toriyama originally turned in a, a three-hour script, which we already discussed a couple weeks ago on, on, uh, on the channel here, uh, it, it is possible that Broly could survive the film and they do a sequel, or they continue the story in Dragon Ball Super the anime. I mean, these things are all very possible, very plausible, and they are things that could very well happen. I can't sit here and tell you that it's a guarantee that Broly will not survive. You want to know why? Because I made a video saying there's no way Broly would ever be in Super, and here we are. I, I, I can't really deal with absolutions ever again, folks. I'm sure you understand that because you never know what's going to happen. By the way, I like how right here, it looks like it's Broly's butt right here. I don't know if you see that right there. Pause, but it's right there. You know, and also, this could be his tail right here. See that how it wraps around his uh, ankles right there? That could very well... Um, ankles. Did I say ankles? His waist. His waist. Um, it, it could be his tail. Um, we don't know if he has a tail, actually. We don't. We have not seen his tail, but I think... I could have sworn they showed his tail in one of the trailers. I could be wrong. i got to think about that. Maybe it's my own brain messing with me. But um, we'll see, because that could be a, a, definitely a factor here. We don't see his tail in any of the other shots, um, but it could be there underneath the... Um, that fur coat thing he wears anyways that's pretty much it that's all we have here as far as the interview goes uh, i'm sure sailor spaz will translate this very soon that's what herm said she was going to do who is our translator for um for kamea khan so i'm very happy about that uh she will be translating this probably for consensu at some point but anyways that's it um anything else drops i will let you know but again i'm looking forward to the film because it looks looks to be a lot of fun visually and that's important to me because I want to walk out of there. I want I want to see a visual spectacle. I want to see it. Thanks so much guys and I'll talk to you soon.